so far uh, we have talked about the general characters and classification of reptilia now we shall take up uh, the the characteristics of different uh, orders of the class reptilia to start with order chelonia order chelonia an absidan skull is divided into subclass anapsida that is divided into two orders order chelonia and order cartlosaria the example for cartlosaria is cymuria is an important uh, mz point of view cymuria happens to be the missing link between amphibia and reptilia and chelonia is represented by the extant uh, uh, examples you know like uh, it has got tortoises the terrestrial forms are called tortoises terrapins the edible forms are called terrapins turtles aquatic forms are called turtles so it includes three kinds of uh, chelonians you know tortoises terrapins and turtles okay body is enclosed in a shell in them you know in all turtles and tortoises body is enclosed in a shell with a dorsal carapace dorsal part is called carapace and the ventral part is called plastron ventral part is called plastron in chelonians body is divisible into head trunk and tail you know and the entire trunk is enclosed in a shell with the dorsal carapace and ventral plastron here now the carapace is formed by fusion of neural arches formed by fusion of the neural arches of vertebrae while the plastron is formed by fusion of clavicles interclavicles ribs and gastralia clavicles interclavicles gastralia that is abdominal ribs you gastralia and ribs used to form plastron here you now due to involvement of the clavicles interclavicles and ribs in this in chelonians sternum is absent sternum is absent then the carapace is externally covered by once again epidermal scales here you know. on the carapace you find carnified epidermal scales the other unique characters of chelonians are cloacal aperture is longitudinal the jaws are edentulous now this point can be asked in mcert other exams you now the reptiles with edentulous jaws are chelonians you know. they do not have teeth you now the jaws are covered by horny sheath they help in mastication of the food so jaws are edentulous you now then they have got uh, a single copulatory organ unlike other reptiles copulatory organ is single and unlike all the other reptiles nostril is also single single nostril is also present here now. okay then limbs are paddle like limbs are paddle like and clawed limbs are paddle like and clawed here now they are all oviparous oviparous and they are known for longest life span known for longest life span this is one of the unique characters of chelonians you know they are all known for the longest life span you know the examples for chelonia are testudo giant land tortoise trionyx soft shelled freshwater terrapin
Trionix is commonly called soft shell freshwater terrapin. Dermochilis, leathery turtle, Helon midas, green, edible, sea turtle. So, these are the examples. Testudo giant land tortoise. Then trionic soft shell freshwater terrapin, dermochilis leathery turtle, kilon midas green edible sea turtle. These are some of the important examples for kilonia. Here now. Then in kilonians, tongue is non protrusible here now. The quadrate is immobile. The quadrate bone is immobile. That is also important character here now. Quadrate bone is immobile. Immobile and uh, Yes, an absent type of skull is present without any temporal vacuity. The next one is order rhynchocephalia. It is represented by a single genus that is Sphenodon. Spinodon, a single genus, you know, Spinodon punctatus, Spinodon gantheri, they are the two uh, species of the genus Spinodon here now. It is considered as the living fossil of Reptilia, this is the most important point. M set point of view and even other exam point of view also, all other competitive exams point of view. You may get a question, what is the living fossil of Reptilia? You should answer Spinodon here now. It is the living fossil of Reptilia. Now, it lives in uh, New in New Zealand. It is confined almost to New Zealand here now. New Zealand. It lives in the burrows made by a seabird called Terril. It lives in the burrows of a seabird called Terril. Both of them lead a uh, kind of mutual life here now, live on amicable terms. Then it looks like a lizard with weak limbs. Limbs are weak here now. It has got a parietal eye or a third eye. Parietal eye or third eye is present on the head part here now. Then here it has got a proatlas. Remnant of notochord called proatlas is present. Unlike other lizards here now, it has got acrodon type of dentition. Acrodont and monophyodont type of dentition is present. Acrodont and monophyodont type of dentition is present. Other lizards you now usually find pleurodont and polyphyodont, but in this the dentition is acrodont and monophyodont. You know. The vertebrae are amphicelous. Vertebrae are amphicelous. You know. Now it is only reptile without a copulatory organ. It is only reptile without a copulatory organ. In spite of the absence of copulatory organ, fertilization is internal. It lays, it lays hardly about 28 eggs in the entire lifespan. An incubation period of each egg is almost one year. It lays hardly 28 eggs in the entire lifespan. Incubation period of each egg is almost one year. And it is at the verge of extinction in New Zealand here now. The abdominal ribs called gastralia are present. The abdominal ribs called glastralia are present here now. Then the posterior cervical, posterior cervical vertebra and first thoracic vertebra, first thoracic vertebra that is the last thoracic, the first thoracic and last cervical vertebra, both of them are provided with uncinate process, provided with uncinate process. The last cervical vertebra and the first thoracic vertebrae are provided with the ribs with uncinate process, you know. Then it is nocturnal, oviparous, nocturnal, oviparous animal, you know. It is commonly called Tuatura lizard, Tuatura lizard or Hateria. Twatura lizard or Hateria in New Zealand. You know. 
Okay, so this also can be asked in MSET and other exams. You know, common name of Sphenodon, commonly called Tuatural Lizard or Hatteria. Other unique characters of this presence of parietal eye, presence of acrodont dentition, monofuodont dentition, amphicelous vertebrae, proatlas. Okay, then one more point you can remember here now: cloacal aperture is transverse. Cloacal aperture is transverse. Cloacal aperture is transverse. Uh, is confined only to New Zealand here now. Okay, commonly called Tuatara lizard or Hatteria. These are all the important characteristics of Rhynchocephalia. That is Sphenodon that belongs to order Rhynchocephalia. Because of protruded snout, it is known as Rhynchocephalia. Rhynco, both are protruded. Cephali, both are snout. The snout is protruded like that of lizard here now. That is why called. Rhynchocephalia. The rhynchocephalia is placed under. Uh, the other day I gave the classification here now. Uh, like Lepidosauria is divided into order rhynchocephalia and order Squamata. Order Squamata is divided into two suborders. That is Lacertilia, suborder Lacertilia, and suborder Ophidia. Now we'll talk about a few important characteristics of suborder Lacertilia. Suborder Lacertilia it includes lizards. It includes lizards in now. In Sphenodon, the skull is perfect diapsid, whereas in lizards in now, the infratemporal vacuity is slightly modified. Infra TV is slightly modified due to the absence of jugal bone. Can now. Then in lizards in now, the body is covered by epidermal scales, which are shed off periodically. Epidermal scales that are shed off periodically here. Then eyes are with movable eyelids, eyes with uh, movable eyelids, and nictitating membrane, and nictitating nictitating membrane. Eyes are with movable eyelids, and nictitating membrane is present here now. Then in lizards here now, the vertebrae are procellus, vertebrae are procellus. And sternum and episternum are present. Episternum and sternum are present. Vertebrae are atrocellus. Sternum and episternum are present. In most of the lizards, you now teeth are pleurodont, pleurodont teeth and polyphyodont teeth are present. Pleurodont and polyphyodont type of teeth are present here now. Tongue is protrusible. In lizards, most of the lizards here now, tongue is protrusible, and forked tongue is present in Varanus. Forked tongue is present in Varanus. Forked tongue is present in Varanus here now. Then in lizards, quadrate bone is movable. Quadrate bone is movable. Okay, quadrate bone is movable here now. And the two rami of lower jaw, rami of lower jaw are connected by a ligament. The two rami of lower jaw, the two rami of the lower jaw connected by ligament, so that they can be pushed wide apart while swallowing large prey. Then in them, cloacal aperture is transverse. Cloacal aperture is transverse. Cloacal aperture is transverse now, and hemi penis is present. Bifid penis called hemi penis is present in them. Hemi penis is present. Hemi penis is present. All of them are oviparous except one or two, which are vivi like chameleon is viviparous now, but rest of the lizards are oviparous now. Then they exhibit autotomy. Some of the lizards like uh, Hemidactylus and all they exhibit autotomy followed by regeneration here now. Now there are some lizards here now which do not have limbs here now. They look like snakes due to the absence of lizard. This point, uh, this question was asked many times in AM, AFMC, Gipmar, AIMS, AMS, and so on and so forth here now. The limbless lizards due to the absence of limbs here now they look like snakes. Then how do you differentiate between limbless lizards and snakes externally here now? You should say. Like in snakes, tympanum is absent, whereas lizards, tympanum is present. In snakes, eyelids are fused with the bones of the 
orbital fossa, whereas in lizards and now eyes are with movable eyelids. On the basis of those two external characters, we can differentiate between limbless lizards and snakes. That is, in lizards, tympanum is present, snakes it is absent. In lizards, tympanum, uh, the eyelids are movable, whereas in snakes, eyelids are used here now. Externally, you can differentiate between both of them by means of that particular character here now. Then I shall give some important examples for limbless lizards here now. Ophiosaurus, commonly called glass snake, Barkundia, commonly called South Indian lizard, South Indian limbless lizard, South Indian limbless lizard. Number three, Rhinura, worm lizard, worm lizard. So, all these three of them are limbless lizards. All three of them are limbless lizards. Ophiosaurus, Barkundia insularis, South Indian lizard here now, and Rhinura worm lizard. Okay. Then, other examples are Draco, flying dragon. It is a lizard with petagium. It is a lizard with membranous expansion called petagium here now. Then there is chameleon. Chameleon, you know very well, it exhibits certain unique features like uh, it is a viviparous lizard. Acrodon teeth are present unlike other lizards. Prehensile tail is present. Syndactylous limbs are present. Syndactylous digits are present. Tongue is protrusible and spoon like. Tongue is spatulate type. Tongue is spatulate type. So, chameleon, viviparous, unlike all other lizards in chameleon here now, the teeth are acrodont here now. Then, tail is highly prehensile. Syndactylous digits are present. Tongue is spatulate type. And it often changes the colors. It often changes the colors. That is, it exhibits mimicry by changing the colors. You know. Then another example is Varanus, commonly called Monitor Lizard. Monitor Lizard. Then another example, Varanus Comodensis. It is the largest lizard that lives in Indonesia. Varanus Komodensis, Komodo dragon, it is also called, lives in Indonesian Asia, it happens to be the largest lizard. Varanus is found even in the inhabitations of uh, India and even South India, you know, monitor lizard and is the only lizard, as I made a mention earlier, only lizard with a forked tongue, with a forked tongue and Varanus is known for its tenacious grip. Then another example is Phrenosoma, it is also a lizard commonly called horned toad. Phrenosoma lives in deserts, commonly called horned toad. So, these are, the lizards are all a non-poisonous, you know, there is a misbelief among the people that lizards are poisonous. Most of the lizards are non-poisonous except two. The poisonous lizards are Heloderma suspectum. Heloderma horridum. Both of them are poisonous lizards, you know. They are found in North America. Heloderma suspectum is commonly called Gila monster. And horridum is called Mexican beaded lizard. These are the only two lizards which are highly poisonous. Two lizards which are highly poisonous. The venom is as fatal as that of a rattlesnake, Crotalus. Venom is as poisonous as that of Crotalus, which is commonly called rattlesnake. They live in North America. Heloderma suspectum, commonly called Gila monster, and Heloderma horridum, commonly called Mexican bearded lizard. Here now. Next, we have Arda Crocodilia. It comes under super order Arcosaria. Crocodilians are the only living 
members of super order arcosari are here now crocodiles usually live in fresh water and brackish water and even mangrove vegetation but none of them live in oceans and seas here now body is dorsoventrally compressed and tail is laterally compressed here now limbs are paddle like limbs are paddle like and clawed limbs are paddle like and clawed here now and they have got pro atlas like spinodon even in crocodiles here now pro atlas a remnant of notochord called pro atlas is present then even in crocodiles also uncinate process is present that is the last cervical and first thoracic vertebrae ribs are provided with uncinate process then in crocodiles urinary bladder is absent because of huge size gigantic size you know urinary bladder is absent you know cloacal aperture cloacal aperture is longitudinal cloacal aperture is longitudinal then body is covered by dermal bony scutes okay dermal bony scutes are there on the back and over the dermal body bony scutes once again epidermal scales are present you know epidermal scales are present the ear opening then the nostrils are almost present towards the tip of the snout here now so that even when they are submerged in water they keep the tip of the snout above surface of water and carry on respiration hearing olfaction unabatedly carry on respiration hearing and olfaction unabatedly here now then they are all carnivorous you know okay oviparous animals you know they lay eggs in the sand make burrows in the sand and lay eggs in the sand you know apart from the normal characteristics they exhibit certain mammalian characters the mammalian characters of crocodiles are the mammalian characters of crocodiles are number 1 thicodont teeth are present thicodont homodont like mammals you now thicodont teeth are present there are other reptiles you now they are acrodont or pleurodont and polyphyodont you know okay whereas thicodont homodont teeth are present next one is ribs are double headed like birds and mammals you know ribs are double headed or bicephalous the next one is a secondary palate palate is present pterygoid and squamosal bones are fused to form a palate like structure that separates the nasal region from buccal cavity enables the crocodiles to respire unabatedly even while uh, catching the prey so on and so forth you know or while they are in water okay palate is present then next they have a diaphragm diaphragm is present separating the thoracic region from the abdominal region that helps in respiration you know then like mammals they have got a simple cochlea not much coiled cochlea a simple cochlea is present then uh, uh, they have got uh, okay four chambered heart four chambered heart like mammals you know and birds they have well developed four chambered heart but however due to the presence of foramen of panisae foramen of panisae at the junction of pulmonary and systemic at the junction of pulmonary and systemic due to presence of that aperture mixing of the blood takes place so in spite of the presence of four chambered heart here now mixed blood is sent to the entire body and this is the most important point here now your m said afmc gipmar and aim swan and so forth here now okay so they have got thicodont homodont teeth here now ribs are double headed secondary palate is present diaphragm is present cochlea is simple and four chambered heart is present like that of birds and mammals you know so these are some of the mammalian characteristics of crocodilia here you now then examples for crocodilia here you now you have number 1 uh, alligator alligators are found in north america the next caimans caimans are found in africa they are highly ferocious caimans are found in africa then you have crocodiles palestris crocodiles 
porosis the next one is gavialis gangeticus gavialis gangeticus lives in ganges lives in river ganges and tributaries of ganges you know it is endemic to india you know endemic to india it has got a long snout with a small pot like structure towards the tip of the snout you know so alligator cayman crocodilus palustris crocodilus porosis and gavialis gangeticus are the important examples for order crocodilia The next one is suborder Ophidia. Important characteristics of Ophidia I shall put before you. In Ophidia, about 330 species of snakes are there in the world here now. In that, only 69 are poisonous. 69 species are poisonous. About 40 of them are terrestrial snakes. 29 are aquatic snakes. So among 330 species, only 69 species are poisonous, you know. Then snakes, you know, the important modifications, what are they, you know? Limbs, girdles, sternum, episternum, urinary bladder, 11th and 12th cranial nerves, 11th and 12th cranial nerves, tympanum, middle ear, pineal gland are absent. So, all these characters are lacking in snake senum. Limbs, girdles, sternum, episternum, urinary bladder, 11th and 12th cranial nerves, tympanum, middle ear, pineal gland are absent in snakes. You know. Then both infratemporal and supratemporal, both supratemporal and infratemporal, temporal vacuities, both infratemporal and supratemporal vacuities are confluent due to the absence of quadrato jugal jugal and squamosal bones in the skull here now quadrato jugal jugal bone and squamosal bone all three of them are absent here now as a result the supratemporal vacuity gets merged with the infratemporal vacuity, you know. Because of the confluent uh, supratemporal infratemporal, the snakes can easily swallow the preys which are much bigger than their own body size, you know. Then apart from this, the two rami of the lower jaw, two rami of lower jaw are connected together by a ligament connected together by a ligament so that the two halves of the lower jaw are pushed wide apart while swallowing large preys. Then the bones of palate are mobile. The bones of the palate, the roof of the buccal cavity are mobilely articulated with each other so that they can be pushed wide apart while swallowing large preys. Then in them, trachea is slightly protrusible. Trachea is slightly protrusible, so it, it pushed upwards while swallowing large preys nearer to the internal nostril so that they can gulp in atmospheric air directly even while swallowing large preys. You know. The unique characters of snakes, you know, the eyelids are fused with the, as I made a mention earlier, eyelids are fused with the bones of skull bones of skull as a result they give always unwinking stare and eyes are covered by transparent cuticle here now. Then with regard to the poison gland of snakes you know 
the poison gland or the venom gland in snakes is a modified supra orbital salivary gland supra orbital salivary gland so venom gland in snakes is a modified supra orbital salivary gland then fangs are the modified maxillary teeth fangs are the modified maxillary teeth maxillary teeth present on the maxilla bone are modified into fangs venom is the dehydrated and concentrated form of salivary juice dehydrated and concentrated form of salivary juice with various enzymes you know the most important enzymes are hyaluronidase hyaluronidase enzyme this hyaluronidase is present in both uh, hemotoxic and neurotoxic snakes it helps in spread of venom quickly in the blood you know of victim helps in fast spread of venom in the blood of the person you know as soon as a person is bitten by the snake you know then next enzyme it has cholinesterase enzyme cholinesterase enzyme this cholinesterase enzyme is present in neurotoxic snakes you know it destroys neurotransmitters and thereby uh, thereby stops the sensation in the bitten part you know destroys the neurotransmitter and thereby prevents the transmission of impulse from one nerve fiber to another nerve fiber and thereby makes the bitten part numb you know then apart from this it has got cardiotoxins cardiotoxins that show effect on heart are present in both neurotoxic and hemotoxic snakes you know then next you have another enzyme ophio oxidases ophio oxidases are present in both hemotoxic and neurotoxic snakes you know this ophio oxidases they enhance the putrefaction of tissue as soon after a person being bitten by a poisonous snake you know then apart from this there are proteolysins proteolysins are present preferably in the hemotoxic snakes you know they destroy tissues you know they destroy tissues you know. then you have endolecithinases these endolecithinases you know they damage the blood vessels rupture the blood vessels and thereby cause profuse bleeding internally you know then venom of snake is highly acidic you know with a ph nearly 6 you know okay the process of extraction of venom is called milking the process of extraction of venom from poisonous snake is called milking because venom has got even medicinal value here now the polyvalent anti venom polyvalent anti venom is prepared by injecting the venom of cobra crane russell swiper and sascaled viper the venom of cobra crate russell swiper and sascaled viper they are injected into the mice or horse you know preferably horse in small quantities over a period of time by increasing the concentration at regular intervals so that the horse gets sensitized with the venom and thereby synthesizes antibodies those antibodies are collected and processed and used as polyvalent anti venom you know the polyvalent anti venom research institutes are located one is at peril in bombay the other one is uh, the other one is cdri kasuli in himachal pradesh one is located at kasuli in himachal pradesh and one more is hopkins research institute which is located at peril in bombay you know so the two kinds of okay uh, the research institutes which are involved in fabricating polyvalent anti venom here now we shall do certain important examples now of certain poisonous snakes you know, the most important poisonous snakes to start with first one nasa nasa the points which can be given in m set afm set zip mark shall put before you nasa nasa is commonly called common cobra it belongs to family elapidae belongs to a family elapidae it is 
वीटिश और ब्लैक और ब्राउन इन कलर विथ अ हुड विच इज फॉर्म बाय एक्सपेंशन ऑफ सर्वाइकल रिब्स here is important point how is the hood formed hood is formed by expansion of cervical ribs upon irritation here now then on the hood uh, either mono oscillate or bino oscillate mark is present on the hood here now you find other single patch like structure or spectacle like structure that is mono oscillate or bino oscillate mark is present on the hood here now then a cuneate shield cuneate shield that is wedge shaped shield lies between fourth and fifth infralabials fourth and fifth infralabials you know between both of them a wedge shaped or cuneate shield is present here now then in all cobras and coral snakes you know third supralabial is large third supralabial is large touches i and nostril touching i and nostril third supralabial is the largest among supralabials here now it touches i and nostril here now and in uh, cobra here now subcardals are double subcardals are double subcardals are double the scales present on the lower side of the tail are arranged in two rows here now then they are all neurotoxic oviparous with the proteroglyphous type of fangs proteroglyphous type of fangs are present here now proteroglyphous type of fangs are present so these are important characteristic features of nasa nasa which is a common cobra here now then you have another one ophiophagus hanna Ophiophagus hanna or it is also called hamdryad hamdryad or it is also called king cobra Ophiophagus hanna or nasa hanna or hamdryad or king cobra it mostly lives in dense forests you know the very ferocious snake it mostly black in color uh, without any marking on the hood here now hood is narrow and long in nasa nasa hood is broad and short but in this hood is long and narrow here now without any bino oscillate or mono oscillate mark on the hood here now more ferocious than nasa nasa here now this also the common characters like it is oviparous neurotoxic proteroglyphous type of fangs are present okay subcardals are single near cloaca but double towards the tip of the tail here now near vent the subcardals are arranged in single row but towards the tip of the tail they are arranged in two rows here now is a snake which feeds on other snakes and that's why it is known as ophiophagus hanna ophiophagi phagi bolto eta eats away other snakes you know that's why we call it ophiophagus hanna and another unique feature of this is is the only snake which builds nests of its own builds nests of its own usually other snakes live in termatoriums which are made by termites you know but this particular snake builds nests of its own here now okay and in this the cuneate shield is absent the cuneate shield which lies between fourth and fifth infralabial of cobra is absent in ophiophagus hanna here now but however it has got a third supralabial which is the largest among all supralabials touching the eye and nostril the next you have this also belongs to family elapidae belongs to the family elapidae then you got another snake that is bangarus kerulus bangarus kerulus is commonly called common crete it also belongs to family elapidae belongs to the family elapidae in uh, the dorsal surface is 
dorsal surface is steel blue in color ventral surface is white ventral surface is white dorsal surface is black or steel blue in color with white paired cross bands white paired cross bands are present on the back white paired cross bands are present on the back in all crates now vertebrals are hexagonal vertebrals are hexagonal the scales present along the vertebral column are known as vertebrals all the vertebrals are hexagonal then all crates now fourth infralabial is the largest fourth infralabial is the largest among all infralabials fourth is the largest here now then all crates are oviparous they are oviparous with the proteroglyphous type of fangs proteroglyphous type of fangs you know and crate is supposed to be more poisonous than cobra you know it is about nearly 3 to 4 times more virulent than naza naza as a bungarus kerala you know then you got another one bungarus fasciatus Bangaras fasciatus is commonly called yellow banded crate. Yellow banded crate, you know, and all the other characters are common. In this dorsal surface is black, ventral surface is white, you know. On the dorsal surface, yellow paired cross bands are present. Dark yellow paired cross bands are present on the back. Other characters are common, you know, even this belongs to Elapidae, Oviparus, Proteroglyphus type of fangs are present, Neurotoxic, you know. Venom is neurotoxic. Fourth infralabial is the largest here now. Subcardals are single. Okay. Then there are characteristic features of Bangaras fasciatus. Also belongs to the same family here now. The next one is uh, the fifth snake here now that is Vipera russelli. It belongs to family Viperidae. It belongs to family Viperidae. It is the longest among all vipers in India. Commonly called chain viper. It is called chain viper because it has got three rows of diamond shaped markings on the back. On the dorsal surface, three rows of hexagonal or diamond shaped markings are present. Hence, it is called chain viper. It is a viviparous. All vipers are viviparous, hemotoxic with solenoglyphous type of fangs. It is a viviparous, hemotoxic with solenoglyphous type of fangs are present. Then all vipers in our subcardals are double here now. Now its venom is called viperidin. It has got medicinal value. It is used to cure hemophilia and bleeding of gums. You know. In all snakes, you know, usually the pupil is circular, whereas in vipers, pupil is vertical. In this Russell's viper, pupil is vertical. You know. Subcardals are arranged in two rows and it is a pitless viper. It doesn't have any l'oreal pit, you know. it is a pitless viper. Then another pitless viper is Echis carinata. It is commonly called Sascaled viper or fursa, it has got an arrow shaped mark on the head. Presence of arrow shaped mark is a unique feature of this Echis carinata, which is commonly called Sascaled viper or fursa. You know. It is also a pitless viper, it is viviparous, hemotoxic with solenoglyphous type of fangs, and subcardals are double. You know. Ancestrodon. Himalayansis. Ancestrodon Himalayansis. This is commonly called Himalayan pit viper. This is another one. Ancestrodon hip nail. This is commonly called hump nosed pit viper. Hump nosed pit viper. In both of them, head is covered by shields. Usually, in all poisonous snakes, you know, that is in vipers especially, head is covered by small scales, you know, whereas in this ancestrodon, Hypnail and Ancestrodon Himalayansis head is covered by shields, you know. Both are pit vipers. L'oreal pit is there between eye and nostril. It acts as a thermoreceptor. Then you have got another snake called Crotalus, commonly called rattlesnake. 
it lives in north america it is also a pitu vipa the most poisonous snake in north america you know commonly crotalus commonly called rattle snake you know all vipers belong to the family viperidae all three of them uh, both of them belong to viperidae whereas crotalus belongs to the family crotalinidae then there is another viper called trimerisurus this is commonly called bamboo pit viper trimerisurus commonly called bamboo pit viper in trimerisurus head is covered by small scales unlike ancestrodon and crotalus you know so ancestrodon here himalayensis ancestrodon hypnail and trimerisurus all three of them also belong to viperidae whereas crotalus belongs to crotalinidae the next we have the sea snakes you know the two important species of sea snakes are hydrophis and anhydrina both of them are sea snakes you know a hydrophis and anhydrina they belong to the family hydrophidae and they are characterized by the presence of an oar shaped tail all other snakes you know tail is tapered and pointed you know whereas in sea snakes you now tail is oar shaped you know the entire body is covered by small scales you now and both the sea snakes you now nostrils are valvular to prevent the entry of water and uh, both the sea snakes have proteroglyphous type of fangs in all vipers in all these vipers you now the fangs are solenoglyphs whereas in sea snakes you know like uh, uh, the cobras and crates you now the fangs are proteroglyphs you know venom is neurotoxic even in sea snakes like uh, like uh, crates and cobras you know venom is neurotoxic you know so these are some of the important uh, poisonous snakes of india in india you can say the longest poisonous snake is naza hanna the most poisonous snake is bangaras fasciatus you know the most poisonous snake in the world is notichis scutatus notichis scutatus commonly called tiger snake this lives in australian forest you know that uh, happens to be the most poisonous snake in world commonly called tiger snake you know notichis scutatus lives in australian forests you know and some of the important non poisonous snakes number 1 unectus murinus commonly called anaconda is the longest snake in the world it is found in south america amazon forest you know python molurus this is commonly called indian rock python it is the longest snake in india largest at the same time large, longest snake in india the next you have python reticulatus constrictor python it is the second longest in the world you know it is mostly found in indonesia python reticulatus commonly called constrictor python and in india python molurus is the longest snake you know commonly called asgar or indian rock python you know the next one is thias commonly called rat snake or friend of farmer is the second longest snake in india thias or zamenis it is also called or friend of farmer it is the second longest snake in india next one is sand boss live in deserts you now uh they are also non poisonous you know both in pythons and sandbows you know claw like hind limbs and vestigial pelvic girdle are present you know 
claw like hind limbs and vestigial pelvic girdle are present internal lichen then other snakes lycodon wolf snake natrix and tropidonotus both of them are water snakes that is fresh water pond snakes natrix and tropidonotus commonly called water snakes are fresh water pond snakes and they are also non poisonous lycodon wolf snake is also a non poisonous then next you have dendrophis is a tree snake non poisonous dryophis whip snake non poisonous next you have tiflops blind snake which is parthenogenetic looks almost like an earthworm feeds on termites it is also non poisonous so these are some of the important non poisonous snakes you know regarding uh, the snake bite you know remember one or two important points which can be asked in mcet or other exams you now the mandibular constrictor or mesator constrictor mandibular constrictor or mesator constrictor the mandibular constrictor or mesator constrictor muscle helps in squeezing the poison gland and helps in ejection of venom helps in squeezing the poison gland and ejection of venom sphenopterygoid muscles sphenopterygoid muscles and the diagastric muscle both of them help in pushing the palate and maxilla forward both of them help in pushing the bones of the palate and uh, maxilla bone forward and thereby they help in erection of the fang erection and piercing of fang into the body of the victim so mandibular constrictor or mesator constrictor helps in squeezing of the venom gland and ejection of venom into the victim you know the sphenopterygoid muscle and diagastric muscles you now they push the bones of the palate forward and thereby the maxilla forward so that the fang becomes erect and pierces into the body of the victim through which the venom is injected into the victim's blood you know 